so I'm here with Gareth Marlowe. Gareth, if you were, if a, a, a small company came to you and they're maybe a, a small technology company and they say, I've got 500, 1,000 pounds to spend on marketing for my business. Um, I, want to, I want to spend it on something like on, on a trade show, on Google Ads, on um, joining a networking group. What would you, what would you say to them? Oh, that's a great question. Um, 500 quid, did you say? Yeah, okay, or like a thousand pounds. Okay. It's a small amount of money. I would money. say you, use that 500 or a thousand pounds and go and get into the place where your customers are most likely to be physically concentrated. That might be a trade show, but it might not be a trade show. It might be a community thing. It might be a learning thing. It might be a social thing. Um, but go to the place use that because that's not a lot of money you're talking about use that not a lot of money to go and see if you can establish 10 really strong new relationships with people who are right in the middle of your customer space because i think that's probably i don't like the the word leverage but i think that's probably the most leverage you can possibly get out of that amount of money because 10 strong relationships established face to face a lot of the other stuff that you could then potentially do could flow from that so, for instance, if an alternative was chuck it at Google Ads or something like that, well, I would much, it's going to be much more valuable if I've got the relationships to understand what the messaging and the content needs to be than just spending a bunch of money throwing some stuff against the wall and seeing what sticks. So from what I'm understanding, you're saying that by, by meeting people, your suggestion to meet people face-to-face -face or to, to get in there in a face-to-face -face context somehow, yep. um, by doing that, you gain some of the knowledge and language and you challenge some of your assumptions um, to the point where you'll be more effective at maybe using those other channels like at a later date with that knowledge right. that you now have. Is that right? right. Uh, that's right. I mean, you know, when you've got a million people on your mailing list and you can do statistically significant uh, message testing at scale, which will give you data back in a day, then brilliant. Sit in your office and you know, uh, data-driven approach to your heart's content. But if you're sitting there at the start of the journey in an SME context, you've got limited resources and you want to get most learning as quickly as possible into your organization, there is nothing to beat that. If I'm going to take a second option, if you can't go travel, then I would take that time and I would use that time and that money and those resources just to hit the phones and try and speak to as many people as possible. Not an attempt to sell, just an attempt to establish those relationships and start getting those insights because even if you have got the million person mailing list that you're then sort of communicating down um you know knowing what and how to communicate the language the problems the priorities what really resonates with people i think you know it's just much more efficient if you're doing that through three four five six conversations with people so that you know you're into their headspace a lot more easily so let me just pl very quickly play devil's advocate here. So I'm a, I'm a um, technical person in a small company, wants to do this. Actually, Gareth, I don't enjoy speaking to people that I've never, never met before. It's like something that stresses me out. Can, right. I, just go and, can I just go and like hire a salesperson or telemarketer to go and, go and do this for me then? So a friend uh, had exactly this situation. Uh, so he was... Uh, founded a startup uh, and it was based on some new technology as in sort of early adoption curve technology um, and they built a proof of concept product about it uh, and then started doing what I would call kind of classic sales and marketing so they were trying to sort of generate some interest and get some inbound going and then get some people into a, uh, a pipeline and, and deal with them so and, and and this person was exactly the way that you describe it's like I feel really awkward doing that um, you know, I never know what to say. I find it incredibly painful. Those guys can just go and schmooze and I'll go pay somebody to schmooze and they'll go and do it. Um, but the problem was that this person ended up with a load of stuff in his uh, pipeline that just kind of wasn't moving. So it was like people were like, well, I'm vaguely interested. And yeah, maybe like check back in in two months time. But there was no, not, nothing was dropping out the bottom. Uh, uh, and my advice to him was, look, you know, it's back to hit the phones thing again. It's like, whatever you do, just like hold your nose, 
it's not it's you know it's not going to be any worse than than that time then when you got into the shower and it came out cold and you weren't expecting it to do it right you know mm. it's not very nice i know you're not going to enjoy it but it's not going to kill you just hold your nose and get off the phone get on the phone so he did and two things happened so the first thing was he discovered that by the time he'd done you know a morning of this painful stuff he was getting over the rejection he was getting over the going straight to voicemail and he'd ended up having two or three really meaningful conversations um and once the conversation started actually ended up being much more pleasant than he feared that it was going to be because uh, people wanted to talk the second thing that he learned was that he didn't have a viable business because there were a whole a whole bunch of reasons why why these pe these opportunities were never going to convert these opportunities were never going to convert and his sales and marketing people were too far away from understanding either the problem space for the customer or the technical space for the product um to be able to spot that so they were saying things like they were coming back and saying stuff is not moving down the funnel because um it's too expensive uh, and so people have got a price reason um and it wasn't there wasn't a price reason at all it was like they were, they were never ever ever gonna do the thing now what he learned was something that obviously he didn't want to hear in terms of you know what he was hoping for but what he also learned was something that was incredibly valuable because it stopped him wasting his time and his effort in that that direction um so yeah my uh my advice there for to, to that person was like look it's horrible i don't like doing it you know there are loads of resources that are out there around you know net, networking for introverts how to start and all of those kinds of things and i'm not going to downplay the anxiety that you can feel when you're standing on the edge of that busy room and everybody's already talking to somebody else so it's like okay who am i going to make a nuisance of myself with first right that's just a really unpleasant thing um but it is one of those things where you know, if you can get over the ripping off the plaster aspect of that very first move, most people then find actually that what comes after is just a reasonably straightforward, natural conversation, which both parties find interesting and valuable. Um, so it's kind of JFDI, really. Brilliant. I love it, Gareth. Thank you for sharing that. My pleasure.